Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to discuss this book. This book is called Make Your Art No Matter What, and it is written by Beth Pickens, and this was published April of 2021. There are a little over 200 pages, and Beth Pickens has a master's de degree in counseling psychology. And that is very important to mention when I discuss this book. Now this is a chapter book, so it's not going to have, you know, pictures and things to look at. This book is very important. So I thought this book, when I initially checked this out from the library, I thought it was sort of like how to rearrange your time to make more art. What this book actually is, is a, an approach from the psychology angle of all the things that could possibly hang you up and get in the way of you making art in your head. And from this perspective, it's fantastic. So the topics she covers are time, work, asking, money, fear, grief, other people, education, thinking and feeling, isolation, marketing, death and God, and then she has sort of a further reading section where you can read other books that she recommends. So I'm going to sort of go through my takeaways for each section. Now I have a ton of bookmarks and what I did was, this is where, you know, I read to the, I read this book in two days, so it's not super lengthy. Um, this section is all the things that are asked in the book of the artist that you can do. This isn't told in sort of broad strokes where you have to figure out how to apply it. She, the author, full on asks you, the artist, to get out a notebook, answer these questions, answer how these questions make you feel, and really look into yourself and see if this is one of the things that is bothering you, that's getting in the way of you making more art, or maybe you're stuck in an art project that's huge. And then these are some things I bookmarked that were very psychological, that I think are great reminders of things that aren't discussed enough. So I really, <laughs> I really went through <laughs> and made a ton of notes <laughs> for myself, but I want to discuss some takeaways. So when she talked about time, she talked about recording a time diary or having an app or something for seven days where you go down to the 15 minute increment from the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed, you set a 15 minute timer and you see how you spend your time. You know, is there rest, leisure, relationships? Um, to see if there are things that are stealing your time, like if you're bogged down and or getting distracted by social media or something like that. And then she advocates for allowing one day a week where there is nothing. No art and no computer time or anything of any distraction where you just work on yourself and your relationships. And I think that's a phenomenal piece of advice. The section from work um, is where you could record um, an entire work history what you've liked, what you didn't like, your skills, your assets, look at your patterns and look at different ways you can earn money. So for her, when she's assessing artists, it's not just selling your art, it's selling the knowledge you have to make that art. And if that's something viable as well and looking at your different skill sets. So there is a good chunk about how to make money from your art and work. And there's a really good one employment boundaries. I thought this was excellent. Um, examine your boundaries within work. We need boundaries within our jobs. They let it, lest they become our central focus in life. So I think that's a really, really great thing, especially for like YouTubers and stuff um, that tend to suffer from burnout. Having workplace boundaries is crucial. Asking was an interesting section that I didn't see coming. And this is sort of Artists that are unable to ask for help or creating a strong support system so they can do that. And it's not just asking like, hey, can I borrow some paint? 
hey, do you have extra of this? It's asking for grants or funding or crew help or residencies or showing art and exhibitions. And her idea is to apply to 20 things in a 12, 12 month period. That way you don't get hang, hung up on the one no. So if you only apply to one thing and one person says no, you can get stuck there. So 20 things in a 12 month period is her recommendation. Under the section for money, um, you're supposed to think of your older version of yourself and ask, and there's a bunch of questions to ask how you feel about money and questions and how you were raised, you know, in your house, in your culture to talk and discuss about money um, and sort of, you know, artists kind of have this thing with money that they're supposed to be starving artists and that trope is very detrimental and there's that thing where sort of artists can sort of gatekeep where they get a resource because they feel in competition too and I don't like any of that and I'm glad Beth doesn't like any of that there's a lot of um she's very inclusive in this book um, acknowledging her viewpoint and where other people's viewpoint could be coming from. Race, age, identity, all these things are included and acknowledged. Um, she acknowledges the wage gap and maybe, you know, women feel more comfortable getting financial advice from other women and lists podcasts in here, which I thought was also very inclusive. Here's a section on fear, talking through artist fear, awareness, acceptance, and action and making a list of all your fears and trying to unlearn and challenge those and, and establish a contrary action for each fear. And she goes through a ton of fear that artists have when trying to get things done and talk it out. And I think that is a very, very valuable resource. Here's a section on grief, which is a great ad. And it's, you know, the role of grief grief in art, like death, loss, it could be grief of change, you know, and things that can be done to help with the grief, like therapy or rituals, flexibility, acceptance, feeling your feelings. This is very much from a psychological standpoint, but grief can very much impact our art. And I think it's wonderful, help, I'm grieving, that she includes all this in this section. The other one is other people and this one was interesting so people and togetherness and time can equal a possible conflict so mentorships and understanding the three pillars of an artist's life you know cr one creative practice two um, taking in arts and experiences and three community and understanding other people's roles in our art and how that may affect our art and how we need to cultivate relationships and mentorships that can assist us in our art artist community and audiences and lineages so here is education this whole thing is on should you get an mfa what people think of the degrees they've received and it's very to the person and she goes through a list and sort of checkpoints of is that something that you need or want and I think that can be very a helpful section for folks that are on the fence about that um, here is thinking and feeling so we she has a thing in here that we're not responsible for our third our first thought the first thing that pops into our head what we're responsible for is our second thought and our first action. And I think this is great. And there's a section on anxiety and depression, which can happen to many folks, whether they are or aren't an artist. There's a section on isolation. And she talks about isolation versus solitude and lists out a bunch of solutions. Because as artists, we tend to work alone and we get sort of sucked into a form of isolation sometimes that isn't healthy and can impact our art as well. And especially for artists that create alone or create in a studio alone, this could be a very valuable section in this book to read and sort of help get folks out of if they are stuck. The section on marketing 
is about, you know, having a web page, an email, social media, partnerships, um, you know, all the things to do to market yourself as an artist. And artists have a lot of trouble marketing themselves and talking about themselves and being in the space that they're in. And this can be very difficult. It can take as much time to make the art as it does to market it. And here's some of her ideas and solutions to help, you know, maybe do direct invitations to get, you know, things out. Death and God, this is also very inclusive to all belief systems. So it's not like she is um, championing one. She is talking about whatever belief system you live in and death and understanding that you are going to be with yourself. This is your longest relationship is you with yourself and death is unavoidable and it's a very, very tough topic. But you can, you know, engage in, use the idea of death and what it actually means for gratitude and death acceptance and your creativity and that can become much deeper and richer because of that. So this is a very interesting topic as well. And then here's her little conclusion. And then here's further reading for each topic. I highly, highly recommend this book. Um, if you're doing a no buy, see what your library's purchasing program is. This book is phenomenal for so many reasons and I love the inclusion. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.